Hello everybody and greetings from the Delta College Planetarium. My name is Brian and I'm here to bring you the next episode in our series exploring the constellations. Last time we found the bright star Vega and the summer constellation Lyra. Today we're going to use Vega to help us find Hercules. Hercules is a relatively dim constellation and can be hard to find. Fortunately, we can use two bright stars to find a distinctive shape that will alert us to Hercules. The two stars we want to find are Vega and Arcturus. By this point, hopefully you're already recalling that we follow the arc of the handle of the Big Dipper to find Arcturus. And from the last episode, we know that we can find Vega by using the stars in the cup of the Little Dipper. Now that we've identified Arcturus and Vega, let's imagine a line extending from Arcturus to Vega. It will pass through this trapezoid shape of stars. This trapezoid is very distinctive. If you've ever taken the time to look closely at a stone archway, you know that the stones that compose the arch are cut at angles to produce the curve of the arch. At the very top of the arch, the stone needs to be cut to a very particular shape to properly distribute the forces along the curve of the arch. Because this particular stone is the key to making the whole arch work, it's known as the keystone. And it happens that this trapezoid shape of stars very closely resembles the keystone of an arch. So naturally, this is also named the keystone. The keystone forms the lower body of Hercules. Hercules is a famous hero of Greek myth. Hercules was gifted with superhuman strength and went on a quest of 12 labors. Many of these labors are represented in various other constellations. So Hercules is supposed to be a picture of a person, but it can be hard to see because Hercules is kneeling and upside down. In many cultures, even preceding the ancient Greeks, this constellation was described as a kneeling man. From the wide side of the trapezoid, two legs extend upwards. Hercules is on bended knee, so one leg has a foot on the ground and the other has a knee. From the narrow side of the body extends this pointed shape of stars, culminating in the person's head. Hercules also has an arm reaching towards Lyra. Under very good conditions, sharp-eyed observers may notice a fuzzy star about a third of the way from the top star to the bottom star on the right-hand side of the keystone. A telescope will reveal that this dim fuzzy star is actually several hundred thousand stars. This is Messier 13 the great globular cluster in Hercules. M13 is one of the brightest globular clusters visible from Earth. So what is a globular cluster? Pretty much what it sounds like. A globular cluster is a big glob of stars. They're usually close to spherical and composed of thousands to millions of stars. They are also very old structures, forming around the same time as their host galaxies. M13 is about 11.5 billion years old. They also are composed of older, redder stars, as all the hotter blue stars have already burned out. Scientists don't yet fully understand how globular clusters form, or what role they play in the evolution of galaxies. We do know, however, that every galaxy of substantial size has many globular clusters. The Milky Way has something like 200 globular clusters orbiting the center of the galaxy, whereas M87, an elliptical galaxy in Virgo, has something like 13,000 globular clusters. Because globular clusters orbit the galaxy, they are relatively far away. M13 is about 22,000 light years from Earth. So if it's clear where you are tonight, go out and use that line from Arcturus to Vega to find the Keystone and Hercules. And if you have a telescope, search for that great globular cluster M13. That's it for today. Next time we'll continue exploring the summer constellations. This is Brian from the Delta College Planetarium wishing you clear skies.